Good morning everyone. Yesterday the president signed into law the universal health care. That can make a lot of difference for Filipinos who need health services, especially those who don't have enough money to afford it. Now I decided I'll try and tackle that topic, but I don't know much about it. So let's go inside and talk to people who know a lot more than me. So I'm now outside the office of DOH, Department of Health. Uh, this is Region 4A. So we'll go inside and speak to the director about the universal health care. So I'm now here with Regional Director Eduardo Hanaro, Hanaro, yeah. Hanaro um, from DOH. So what can you tell us about this universal health care? What does it mean for the average person and how is it different from what we had before? Okay, actually the universal health care is, I call it an opportunity for us to change things the way they should and the way the Filipinos want the health system should go. Before, uh, there are a lot of Filipinos who haven't seen a doctor, who haven't been cared of, especially in far flung areas, in the islands, in the bondocks. However, this time, there is an opportunity now, a chance for them to, to be taken care of because of the mandate to not only to enroll all Filipinos, but to take care of all Filipinos, especially the poor, especially the poor. Right. Well, but there, there is something that we should uh, understand. It will not, not take that easy. It will have to evolve. Okay. Something that we used to have now and, a, and patches of what good things that we do. The patches of good things that we do need to be expanded. Right. Like what we have. We have the, the uh, Malasakit Center. We have the MAI programs, the Medical Assistance for Indigency program. We have the DSWD working with the Department of Health, the PCSO working with us, and field health. Field health need to definitely be overhauled. Right. Because there will be a new way of accrediting, new way of providing uh, funds, and a new way of, of listing the people okay. that needs to be there. Actually, one of the... Uh, uh, items in the universal care is the change of the structure of the uh, pill health. Okay, interesting. Yeah, one thing is the change in the composition of its board and the mandate that they will be the sole, sole funding agency that will take care of all other funding agencies. But okay. with that, it cannot be working just like what we have, we have now, that they cannot pay the hospital, okay. the, the, they cannot, uh, the people cannot access them, so it has to be reversed, all okay. these things. So that is how we see universal health care. Okay. It's more on strengthening the primary level of our health care system. So meaning, at the barangay health station and the rural health unit, at least at that level, not necessarily you have a human resource, at least you have an access to the health system. And you can easily ask questions or get information on how to take care of yourself. Right. Now, my understanding is that the uh, IRR hasn't been finalized yet. That's Not still yet. a work in progress. Right, right. I think they've already drafted uh, an IRR even before the approval of the bill, but okay. now they have to do fast uh, things, speed the, 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 the process, right. to increase the process so that uh, it can be used as soon as possible and set up all the motions to, to, to develop or evolve the new health system. Employees of companies, they're generally enrolled with Phil Health through their company, right? So right. they're already covered. But let's say I'm, the, I'm a guy at home, I don't have a job, uh, I don't have any money. What would this mean? Do I have to go and enroll or can I just go to a hospital? No, it's the mandate now of government to look for all those people. So, so the government Everybody, has to find them yes. and enroll them? Enroll them. Okay. And since we have already the ID system, that would be easier for us to do. Okay. And one more thing, uh, there should be an understanding that uh, the universal health care is uh, uh, not only strengthening of the local system, but to put them together, to make them in sync. This is what you call the health uh, providers network. So at the moment, if you cannot do things there at your level, at least you know where to refer the patient. Okay. Or at least the patient know where to go. Where to go to, okay. Yeah, that's the basic information that they have to, to have to, to, to really run the reverse health care. 
Okay. Um, so we have this uh, one sheet here. I'll post it in the comment section down below. One of the things it mentions is financing. Yes. Um, because this is going to cost a lot of money, mm -hmm. right? Very true. So where's the money going to come from? I believe we're eyeing the syntax increase. Ah, so the syntax. But unfortunately, so tobacco, sodas, yeah, tobacco, things yes, like that. Uh, even sugar. Sugar. Uh, yeah. They are now all included there. However, we are not banking on it yet, since it has not been. Uh, it has been discussed, but not yet been uh, uh, approved by both Congress. So we are looking forward to have that uh, approved. Okay. But at the moment, we have to contain ourselves with what we have in the Department of Health, what we have at the field level, and what we could, uh, what funds can be taken from other sources. Uh, which is currently available. Because I saw here it mentions PACOR, that's the gambling, yeah. Yeah, it's the and then PCSO, which is the lottery system. Right. Uh, so it is really meant for medical assistance. Okay. Mm. So Excellent. we have funds there, we have funds from DSWD, we have funds from PACOR, PCSO, DSWD, we have from the government, we have the local government too, okay. so they will be pulled together. Okay. And one thing, there should be a uh, trust fund in the province where all this income or uh, reimbursements can be taken in. And they may be in the general fund of the province, but it should be earmarked for the health system. Because I think it's really lacking in the province, right? Even, I think, doctors, because it's very yeah. hard to earn a good income in the province right, compared right. to coming to Manila or Cebu or mm -hmm. one of the other popular cities. Um, so maybe that's something they also need to consider with these funds is if you want good doctors, you have to pay a reasonable yeah, uh, wage true. also, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To keep them there so that right. they can actually serve the people. Yeah. Because uh, I saw here it mentions, or maybe I read it online, about building new facilities also. Uh, uh, right. New health uh, centers, uh, 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 things like that. Actually, we have done that, but it does, uh, what we've done is on the wrong foot. <laughs> we started on the wrong foot. The planning has been very poor. Okay. And the, the, the process has been very poor. Okay. So but room, we have room, already room. Have spent billions of pesos uh, increasing the civil works for the hospitals, the barangay health stations and the rural health centers, but still we have not achieved what we want to achieve. Okay. We have already funds before for equipment, but still again, we have poor kinds of equipment. So more, more okay. planning, more organization about yeah. how to use and the good funds people. and good people. At the field level, especially at the community level, people need to be given the opportunity to know where to go first when they need health, the health system. So at the at field level, we have already doctors there, but we have also equipment. But the kinds of training that we, the Department of Health has been doing doesn't really fit in to the needs of the health centers in the barangay station. What do I mean? We have ultrasound machine. At the barangay level? We, at the barangay level. Wow. We have already ECG machine. So these are already diagnostic tools. However, our doctors there, our They're nurses not do trained. not know how to use. So we have a problem there. Then we have to make sure that the st standard treatment protocol will be the same at all levels. Right. It has to be like that or else we'll be putting one area more accessible against another area. Meaning, if you have a good doctor there who knows more than the doctors in the other area, everyone will go to, everyone will go to the good one. And then they won't be able to handle it. Right, so you, you fail with the, the, the network. Right. So really we have to put them in the network, competency base, should be increased, they, 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 they should make use of their equipment, and the, the attitude and the, the passion to, to, to really teach or to treat should be there. And do you think this can be done, these improvements? It can be done. It can be done. We can link them. It will take some time. It needs a good strategy, but it can be done. That's good. So I think this will benefit the people. Uh, uh, yes. Like I said to you earlier, in the UK, we have National Health Service, which mm -hmm. is I guess the equivalent of your universal healthcare. So for us, it's just natural. Any any kind of medical need, you go to the doctor. You don't. Everything's covered. Everything's paid for. Yeah, that should um, be the case. So. But for here, uh, that's that's the aim, right? That's mm -hmm, the idea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but at first, we will have to to prioritize first the the, the real poor. Yeah. The the in, the uh, uh, what call it geographically disadvantaged areas. Okay. And the indigenous people. Right. So we have to 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 really focus on them first, then slowly get up into the more urban areas. 
So let's imagine um, you have a, a middle class person, mm -hmm. but they're unemployed. Yes. How would this affect them, the universal health care? So well, they do have some money, they're not poor, but they're not employed either. I believe we will ask them to at least pay their insurance. The insurance? Yes. So they would have a monthly contribution? It's a yearly contribution. Yearly contribution. Yeah. contribution. It's a yearly contribution. It's very small anyway. Yeah. But you get more from the small uh, Similar to if they were employed, they would make yes. a contribution mm -hmm. to field health. Yeah. Okay. And anyway, in, in, uh, in government service, you're already automatically uh, en enrolled in field health. Okay. Now we have also this uh, a concept like when you go to a hospital and you are not enrolled, you will be automatically enrolled. Okay. So that's a point of service enrollment. So if they miss you while they're scouting for people yes, to enroll, uh, you'll be enrolled. you will do it yes, when you um, go there. Okay, that's good. So these are the processes that we have to, tell, to set up yeah. so that uh, people could really access to the health system. But it's really a matter of the entry of the people to the health system. So we know that they should go first to the first referral level, the, the, the frontline levels, but how about if you are in the mountains, yeah. the mountaineering people, how can they be assured that they will get the health service they need if ever happen, anything happens to them in the mountains? Right. That's one. At the road level, how can we be sure that the, 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 the riders at the road level will be taken care of if something happens to them? So. Uh, Actually, it's really the entry of people to the health system that matters most here. We have to be to ensure them that there is a group of people who will uh, attend to them whenever something happens. Okay. So there's a lot of work to be done. Right. But, but it really, can be done. Yeah, it can be done. Okay. We are starting our mapping. We are starting our uh, touch basing our communities. We have started uh, training our uh, municipal health officers because they really have to, to have this practice to, to understand the, the equipment that they have with the rural health unit. Okay, thank you very much for your time okay. today. Thank you. Thank you.